Hopkinton residents and families. I'm Carol Cavanaugh, the superintendent of the public schools. As promised throughout our budget season, I'll be delivering updates to you so that you can keep apprised of what's happening in the schools, the needs for the schools, and the impact of the school budget on the community. As you may know, on Tuesday evening, September 24th, the school committee met with the select board in order to have preliminary budget discussions. At that meeting, an initial amount of 5.54% was mentioned for the school budget. Subsequent to that time, we received information from the town manager about how to go about our budget process. One of the things that the town manager and the select board would like for us to do is to be able to build a budget from the ground up. We talk about building a, a zero-based budget, and what we mean by that is that we really think about all of the things that we need, starting with sort of nothing and building um, something that will actually suit the needs of all of the students in all of our schools every day. The second thing that they would like us to do is to try to keep our budget growth to a 2.5% impact on new growth. The final thing that they would like us to do is to develop a budget that sustains our current level of services. Realistically, uh, what they're asking is that we don't include any new programs. Um, the school department has talked about this at length, and we really feel like with the grant money that we take in, we are able to build new programs. We're doing that currently. We have STEAM programs, we have career vocational technical education programs, um, and that's just a, a small snippet of the kinds of things that we are building with grant funding. In the coming weeks, I will be visiting with all of the high school principals, uh, all of the school principals, and all of the directors throughout the, throughout the school community, and I'll be listening to their needs. So each one of them will have a budget talk with us, and. Um, the director of finance and I will be working with them to keep the budget hopefully within that 2.5% impact um, of net new growth. So for starters, it's important for you, and I know that I, I deliver this information all the time, but it's important for you to have an understanding of where we are with student enrollment. These are the enrollment numbers as of October 2nd, 2019. You can see that in grades 1 to 12, our net gain of students this year currently is 254 new students. In the past three years, the schools have taken in over 500 new students. And that includes kids who have moved away, but our net gain has been over 500. In this year alone, it's 254 new students. If you think about the number of kids that we have in a graduating class, for example, um, that's like adding a brand new class to Hopkinton High School. Um, and over two years, three years' time with 500 students, it's like adding two new classes. It does seem, however, that our rapid enrollment growth has leveled off a little bit. For a while, we were getting about 10 new students a day through the month of August. Um, but now, since the start of school, we've only had three new students. One of the other things I think that's important to look at is the enrollment in each one of our grades. Our highest class right now is the junior class, grade 11, 11 at Hopkinton High School. They have 329 students. We have over 300 students in grades 3, 7, 9, and 11. And we have many classes that are close to it. At the elementary level, we have outlined for you the number of teachers at each grade level. So at K and 1, we have 13 classrooms. At grade 2, we have 12. At grade 3, we have 13. And in grades 4 and 5, we still have 12 classrooms. Given the number of students in each of those places, our class sizes are, on average, uh, 21 in K, 23 in first grade, 21 in second grade, 23 in third grade, and 24 in both grades 4 and 5. Now, naturally, there's a little, little bit of fluctuation because we're very cautious about the way we place children so that we're sure that they're a good match with the teacher and the services that they need. So in some of these classrooms, for example, there could be 26 students or 25 students. In this last column over here, in targets, what you can see is the ideal number of students in a classroom. So for K and 1, it would be 18 to 19. In 2 and 3, it would be 19 to 20. And in 4 and 5, it would be about 22 students. And so you can see that we are over in each one of those. 
but I don't want to take an alarmist approach to this. While those numbers are a little bit high this year, uh, we have people in place and services in place and delivery models in place, so the kids are really still getting a very good education here in the Hopkinton Public Schools. But I would advise that this is not sustainable long term. So what does that mean for us next year? Next year, the Hopkins School is going to need to go to 14 and 14 classrooms, 14 at grade 4 and 14 at grade 5. And we currently have 12 and 12, as I pointed out in the previous slide. That means we would need to hire four classroom teachers and an additional teacher, because all of those new classrooms will need to have art, music, wellness, PE, and all of those additional um, classes that go along with, with uh, areas of specialization. So what I've done here in this Hopkins box is I've put in the dollar amount that it would cost us to hire five teachers, and that's $400,000. And I know that many people have already seen this slide, but I think it's a very important slide so that you have a sense of the budget increases the schools are going to need. The teachers right now are in the second year of a three-year contract. Next year, they'll be in a third year. That contract says that teachers will get a 2.5% increase for year three of that contract. If we do the math on that, and again, this math is uh, as, as accurate as it can be, given where we are at this point in time, it's about $960,000 to give the teachers the raises that have, in fact, been negotiated. Teachers also get step raises, meaning that if you are a third year teacher, for example, in the Hopkinton Public Schools, next year when you go to your fourth year, you step up on the salary schedule. When you go to your fifth year, you will again step up on the salary schedule. Right now, we have about 140 teachers poised to make a step. The average step increase is about $2,900. The dollar amount affixed to step raise increases for next year is roughly, and again, this is an estimate, $406,000. We also have teachers who will make lane changes. And when we say lane changes, what we mean is that they will have an increased degree. So if they have a bachelor's degree, they may have 15 credits beyond the bachelor's degree, or they may earn a master's degree, or they may earn a CAGS. Um, so as they do that, they are entitled to a lane change, which also increases their salary. Right now, we've budgeted about $200,000 for that. And it's very hard to tell if teachers will do this or will not do this. They do submit paperwork indicating that they, they anticipate they will. But there's no guarantee that they will. And there's no guarantee that they won't. So this is really a best mathematical guess that we have in place right now. If we add these three non-negotiable figures, we come up with a million five hundred sixty-six thousand. If we take that dollar figure and we add the Hopkins four hundred thousand dollars for the five new teachers that we know they will need there next year, we're talking about a dollar figure that is very close to two million dollars. If the school department has a fifty million dollar budget, every five hundred thousand dollars that we add to the FY twenty one budget is technically one percent. What we're looking at on this slide alone is a 4% increase then. And that's before we look at increasing any of the faculty or the paraprofessionals uh, or textbooks or any technology increases or special education services at either the high school or the middle school or Elmwood or Marathon. And we also have to in include in our, our thinking the increases in special education services and needs for next year. With 4% right here, I can tell you that we will never be able to open our schools next year at 5.54%. It is just not feasible mathematically. What you saw in the previous slide, as I said, was non-negotiable. So let's talk also about some of the impacts of the growth that we're seeing in our schools. And this is a slide that I think is a really important one so that you can sort of see when we have 500 new students arrive in three years, what impact that has on teaching and learning. Just this week, I received an email from a parent who explained to me that her junior child is in a classroom where she has 30 students in her honors math class. She has 28 students in her AP US history class and 27 students in her AP chemistry class. These are very large class sizes. And again, I will say I don't want to be alarmist. While we would much prefer that this particular student was in smaller classes, 
Um, when you have classes that are AP classes and honors classes, our kids are sort of tenacious learners. They are kids who are very, very invested, and they will go the extra mile to do well. But again, I want to say that this is not sustainable. Long term, we cannot keep filling classrooms with a 30, 28, and 27 students. So when we go through our budget process this year, and this is what I was alluding to before, Mr. Bishop will sit in a room with me and the Director of Finance, Susan Rothermick, and we'll have a conversation about where he needs to fill in places in the high school schedule to increase his faculty so that we can avoid something like this. Now, to be fair, what we have at the high school is what's called a student-generated schedule. It means that students will tell us what they want to take, and then we create classes based on the number of students who have indicated interest in a particular course. So, for example, if we have 75 students who want an AP U.S. History class, we might make three sections. If we have 80 students who want that, we might up that then to four sections of 20. So in an effort to be very fair about this, where you see that we have 30 students in an honors math class, there's a section opposite that that has only 19 students. So when we created those two sections, there would have been 49 students. We would have planned for classrooms where we have 24 and 25. But because we want all of our students to get what they need, we end up with a classroom that has 30 and 19. And in some cases, this will build a little bit of teacher fatigue to have 30 students in that classroom because it's very difficult to get to all of your students when you have 30 of them in front of you. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about preschool numbers because this is another impact. Uh, currently, we have six sections of preschool, and the law says that we can put seven students on an IEP in a preschool classroom, and we can fill that classroom to 15. That's its capacity. We have 32 students in there now, and as a student turns three, they are allowed to join a preschool classroom. So as a, three, a person turns three, they come in, and typically we will get about 10 new students, which we anticipate this year. When we get to about our 40th student, we are going to have to hire another teacher, which may actually happen now during FY20, which would be added to the FY21 budget. Uh, this is something, again, non-negotiable. Um, we are mandated to service all of our special education students who are um, of preschool age, and that's between age three and five. And finally, this slide over here is one that I've added to this presentation because I think it's important that you see what's going on right here. Right here, we have a student who is uh, being pulled out of the classroom um, and receiving some one-to-one -one education. The very sad part of this story is that this is the first child who's being taught in a hallway at the Marathon School. Uh, that's because we are already running out of room at the Marathon School. If we put in this preschool, we're going to have to take the health, preschool classroom, we're going to have to take the health classroom away. Um, and we already have 13 and 13 um, kindergarten and, and one classrooms in that building. What I'm saying is that we opened Marathon one year ago, and we are already outgrowing it in a lot of ways. Finally, I incorporated this slide, and I just thought it was a really nice indication of what it is that we're going through. What you're seeing on the screen right here is actually an email sent from Mr. Bishop's secretary out to the faculty at Hopkinton High School. And what she's saying in this email is that the new desks have arrived at Hopkinton High School. And below, you can see that there is a list of the classrooms who are slated to receive new desks. Only five of them will be doled out. And what she says at the bottom of the email is that if your classroom is no longer on the list, let them know. But if you do need additional desks, let them know AS ASAP. And what she tells them is quantities are limited. This is a very subtle way of showing you how the growth is filtering down so that we don't even really have enough desks for the kids at the high school anymore. People will say to me, if you need more teachers, just hire them. And what I'm saying is, I would love to hire teachers and put those desks in classrooms, except that we, are run, we have run out of classrooms at Hopkinton High School. So I guess I've gone a very long way. 
to say to you that I am going to need your support. And I hope families will come out this year and really support the school budget. Um, the schools are the, the gemstone of your community. The schools are the reason so many people are moving here. When we ask people, why have you moved to Hopkinton? They will say it is for the public school system. You have a wonderful system, and you are going to need to support it this budget season especially uh, with 254 new students. On October 17th, the school committee will be having um, a meeting where they see the capital budget presentation. That's different from the operating budget. And what we'll be looking at there is the feasibility study for the Elmwood School, modular classroom costs. We are going to need modular classrooms at two of our elementary schools, additional classrooms at Hopkinton High School, and um, the costs for new roofing at the middle school and at the Hopkins School. These are the primary drivers of this year's capital budget. I hope that you will all support the schools. I hope that you'll stay attentive to these budget updates. I hope that you can attend a school committee meeting um, and really advocate for the public schools. Again, they really are the gemstone of your community, and I am proud to be your superintendent. Thank you.